So far we've learned different data mapping techniques, working with geometry, domains. For this section, we're going to be working with colors. Um, how do we map colors onto a list of geometry? So to do that, we will be using what's known as a gradient map or a gradient, okay? So when we do a gradient, you should select that, okay? This is essentially what it looks like. And it takes in a lower, li a lower limit and an upper limit. What does this sound like? These are just domains. So it's like the highest value and the lowest value. And then parameters, which are values that are within the upper and the, the lower and the upper limit, okay? So think of this as a linear domain such that it's, it begins here and ends here, all right? That is your domain. So to get started, we want, let's for instance, let's say we want our upper limit to be uh, one. Okay, so we're going to do a slider 0 to 10. We want an upper limit that's say 1. Copy this over. One that is say 7. Okay. But we want values that are between 1 and 7. Okay, so what that means is we're going to construct a domain. Connect that. That gives us one to seven. And then we want to do a range that creates, you can just copy this. So assuming we want steps five so we assuming we want five values between one and seven if you remember from the last video as it traverses from one index to another that is a step so from zero to one that's a step from one to two that's a step until it gets to the total number of steps but what we want is for the total number of items here to equal to five so what we're going to do is negative one and now we have a total number so as we adjust this we get numbers that are between one and seven but we get the number that responds to this slider okay now what we want to do is connect this to this and what that is going to give us is colors. So imagine this is one to seven. And so at 2.5, probably somewhere here. At four, or probably somewhere here. 5.5, or probably somewhere here. Okay. And so whatever color falls along this domain of one to seven, that will be returned here. So you can imagine one will be here and seven will be orange, okay? So let's view this by testing this out on the first five elements of our panel frames. Okay, so to get that, we will, I'm going to move this down a bit, do a series. which takes a start of zero because the index always starts at zero. Let's do a zero here. Steps, we want the step to be one. It's one by default. And then we want the count to be five. So what we get from this list is from zero to four. Because it starts from zero, the count of five and steps of one. Okay, now we're going to use this to get the 
the frames that are at these indices so at 0 1 2 3 4 we want those items so the list what we're going to get is our surface which we'll plug here and then we're going to get so it's giving us one two three four five so it looks like it's going in this order okay to be sure about that let's tag from the center point uh, area and then centroid is the location and the tag is the text value we hide this and we see zero one two three four that's the order of this list so now we want to apply these five colors just to see how they apply here so we're going to use a preview And then connect our geometry which is this and connect our color to here all right so notice that we have the five colors all appearing if we increase or decrease the slider you notice that the first and the last values stay the same every other thing in between changes okay and that's because like I said this is one and this is seven so these these extreme values will always be the same but every other thing in here will change depending on how many of these values we have in between Let me get rid of that so we increase still these two are the same all right so what if we wanted to apply these six colors to all the panel frames that we have let's go ahead and do that double click the relay and put our list here but we also want to see the index of all our panel frames so let's get the length of this get the number of lists and then put that in the count okay so now we also want to put the area for this here get rid of that so that's at list length let's see so let's get the index all right let's move this out a bit put this here have our colors all right so you see what it does is the first five colors get applied to the first five elements and the last color gets applied to the rest of the elements in the list. Now this is how Grasshopper handles translation of data from list to list. Okay, so let's do this panel for us to understand and connect our surfaces to the panel okay so how grasshopper handles this is the first index matches the first index and subsequent indices just get matched to one another but when it gets to the last one it applies it to everything after five and so 
that's why we see that let me remove this we see that this last value which is the orange here is applied from the last from the fifth index all the way to the 97th index what that is called in grasshopper is operation with longest list okay so what longest list does that's how it handles list by default but what longest list does is it takes in a list so let's say a list of frames and the list of colors and what it does I'm duplicate this is the list stays the same but look what it's done to the list of colors okay by default it repeats last so the last value in the shortest list is repeated that's why the list here after five it repeats five all the way to the end and that's why it's all orange that's how grasshopper handles lists operations by default however with this longest list you can also repeat first okay so let's connect our geometry to the color that's coming out we had it on repeat last so this is how we saw grasshopper handle it but when we do a repeat first you see what it does it repeats the first value up until the last five colors which then get so it pretty much does the reverse where we had a panel list okay the last five it applies this to that 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 and the rest it applies to that so that's repeat first okay it's repeating the first value in the shortest list so get rid of these repeat last which you know is it repeats the last value in the shortest list and then there's interpolate so what it does is this is almost an even distribution so it tries as best as it can to evenly distribute the colors that's why we see that we have one two three four five six groupings because we have six but it's divided it equally across the list we also have wrap and all wrap does is it, it repeats the application of the color so for it goes from 0 1 2 3 4 5 we have the six colors and then it starts 0 1 2 3 4 5 again okay and then it keeps repeating after it goes through the shortest list it repeats the values the subsequent values and then the flip what it does is it takes 1 2 Three, four, five, six. So the number of values in the shortest list, right? And then uses the last list as a mirror and flips. So you see that these are the same color and these are the same color. These are the same color. So it reverses the list until it gets to the first one again. And then it goes in the right order until it gets to the last one and then flips the list. And so that's essentially how flip works. It flips the list after it gets to the last one. That's how Grasshopper applies information from one list to another list. And obviously if you have longest list, it means you have shortest list, All right? Shortest, shortest list, okay? And you can imagine it does the reverse. It takes, to pass is here 
past this here okay so it says trim end so from the longest list it trimmed the list to match the amount of elements that we have in the shortest list so when I pass the surface here to the surface here notice after the last list of our surfaces we don't have the colors applied to anything else okay because it trimmed the end but then you can trim start so it takes the first or the last six elements it trims every other thing before that and then it also has an interpolate okay so what it does is it divides the total number of elements by the shortest list by a count of the shortest list and tries to give you an even spread so we have from 0 to 19 or 20 and then the count before it gets to the next one will be as close as possible to all the distributions so we have 1 basically to 20 we have 18 to 40 we have 38 to 59 and so the distribution is evenly it's, it tries to evenly distribute it as best as possible so just like we had the interpolate which tries to distribute using all the elements shortest list interpolate tries to distribute evenly using the first item of every distribution point okay now that's how grasshopper handles uh, list operations